Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Revelation in the News. Today, we have a very special guest that, uh, for the most of his life, believed in the pre-tribulation rapture. That is, Christians will be out of here for that seven-year tribulation period where all hell is breaking loose in the world. And, and it's because he read books by the most famous preacher of experts in the world. He, he watched their television shows, and he purchased their conference DVDs, like me of you and I probably have. Yet there were always passages in the Bible that troubled him. The same ones that probably trouble you. Yet he did what many of us do, and he naturally assumed that the experts knew more than we do and that we should simply just accept them for what they were saying. And he says that that was his big mistake. I want to introduce you today, uh, our special guest to Revelation the News, Michael Snyder. Michael, it's great to have you here with us at Revelation the News. Thank you, Zach. I'm so thrilled to be on Revelation in the News. Yes. I've, I've watched you do this show for quite some time, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to sit down with Zach sometime and, and do the show, Revelation in the News? So I'm really excited to be here. And I can tell you that it really is an honor for uh, me to have you here on, on, the, on the show today. You know, many of you know Michael Snyder's name, maybe from uh, the author of the, the famous Economic Collapse blog or the End of the American Dream blog and also host of the new TV show, The Watch. But Michael, we brought you here on Revelation the News today because I want to talk to you about your new book, The Rapture Verdict. And um, I'm telling you right now that this book has been shaking me like none other. I'm a reader. I love to read, and I love to study. I read lots of books. And I would honestly say in the past five years, the three most important books that I have read is The Harbinger by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, The Islamic Antichrist by Joel Richardson, and now, and I kid you not, no fluff, The Rapture Verdict by you, by, by you, Michael Snyder. It needs to be in every person's home. You wrote this book that details why you, it's been changing my own views, because I didn't believe this. I believe something different, but you believe we're going to be going through the full seven-year tribulation that we're not going to magically escape even as Christians. This is controversial. Yes. I'm sure you're receiving a lot of, of flack for it. You're going to receive a lot more flack for it. What in the world made you want to write a book like this? Yeah. It, it, why would anyone want to write yeah. a book like uh -huh. this, Zach? Yeah. Because it's going to make me a target. People mm -hmm. are going to be upset with me. In fact, members of my own family who are very strongly pre-trib are not thrilled that I've written this book. I would imagine book. not. But, uh, yeah. you know, there's a couple things. One thing, uh, Zach, is that for a, a, a very long time, you know, if someone came to me and they asked and they said, hey, Michael, you know, is there a book, is there a DVD that you could, you know, give to me that you could recommend that really just explains what the Bible really has to say about the rapture? Because mm. there's lots of rapture books out there, sure. Zach. There's oh, yeah. dozens and dozens of them. There's movies, there's DVDs. Yeah. But almost all of them are from the pre-trib perspective. And so what I've always been looking for and what people you know, have, have been looking for is a book or DVD, some kind of resource that just really explains why the, the Jesus is coming back after the tribulation. Yeah. And all this time, I knew of a few a couple resources that made a few good points, but I never knew one that I could say, yeah, this really nails it. It, 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 it hits it out of the park. And so I was frustrated. I was like, why isn't there someone who's come out yes. with a clear explanation of what the Bible really actually has to say? And, and yes. so that's been on my heart. In fact, you know, when I was early in writing this book, I talked to you and Sasha about that, this because it, it was on my heart. But then, but that wasn't alone enough to write the book. But then God really put it very strongly on my heart that the things he's been teaching me and downloading into me for decades, literally, because I've been immersed in, in the world of Bible prophecy all my life, that I need that now was the time yes. to write this book, get this information out there, and uh, and I needed to do that. And Amen. you know the funny thing is, is that the very first time I was ever on the Jim Baker show, uh -huh. the very first, you know, I came here to Morningside for the very first time. I wasn't actually even supposed to be on the show. Yeah, you're supposed to be a a, a seminar speaker, right? Yeah, I yeah. was just here for a seminar, uh -huh. and uh, and and at the last minute, they brought me. Uh, up onto the stage yeah. um, to, and John Shorey was mm -hmm. the guest. Mm -hmm. But if you remember that day, I was there as the economic guy to talk about economics. And at the very last moment, okay, I'm up there 
and the taping begins, and not the edited version, but the unedited version, uh, Jim Baker opens the show, and he turns to me to ask the very first question, and the very first question he ever asked me was about the rapture. Wow. And he didn't know me. He didn't know me from the man in the moon, but he directed that question to me. And I huh. believe now looking back that that was prophetic. I believe it. Because as much as I love to talk about economics and all these other things, and, and we'll talk about them some more on future shows, I'm sure. I think much more importantly, is what, even what God, why he brought me here was to talk about this Amen. even more than economics. You know, today's show might very well be the most important program that you've ever tuned into. We're going to be discussing why is it a post-tribulation rapture theory, how everything you knew about the tribulation may just be wrong. You know, I can, I can be a little stubborn. You know, I, I'm not a fickle person. Once I believe something, it's there until somebody really uh, demonstrates a case otherwise. And I believe your skills as a previous lawyer on, on K Street in Washington, have really helped you write this book because it wasn't opinion. It wasn't just simply, uh, you know, impressions, so to speak. It was things that were in the Word of God. Yes. There were so many passages that I, I never could quite understand, and you cleared up for me, and it's shaken me. And I tell you, I'm not scared. I, I, we shouldn't be scared about going through the tribulation because if we're ever scared or fearful, just a clear indication that our eyes are not focused on Jesus. But we're going to be talking about in this program why it's a post-tribulation rapture view. But to set the stage, I don't think we can even get into the discussion until we realize what the word parousia means yeah. and how it um, is important to uh, be able to figure out when Jesus comes back. Yeah, Zach, I had been doing research for this book and I had, uh, you know, I thought I was just about done. I, th I thought I had a pretty good book. Yeah. But apparently God felt otherwise because I'm, I'm there one night and all of a sudden it wasn't an audible voice, but I got an extremely strong impression that I needed to go back and look at 1 Corinthians 15. Yes. And I thought, 1 Corinthians 15 is already in my book. I, I looked at it until I was blue in the face. I was like, what in the world, oh, yeah. God? You know, but you know, sometimes you, you know, we think we know it all, and then God can come along and humble <laughs> us. And this was sure. one of those moments. And so I picked up, and I went to 1 Corinthians 15, and I said, okay, God, what do you want to show me? And so you know, I looked at the famous passage there about, at, at the end of 1 Corinthians 15 about how we're going to be caught up, how we're going to be raptured, and, and you know, it, it, well, it in, starts in verse 51. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible will put on incorruption and this mortal will put on immortality. So I immediately went there thinking, well, that's what God wanted to show me. And I already talked about the last trumpet in my book and, and uh, you know, how we see the series of trumpets and how that's related to the the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation. And I, so I looked at that, but no, that's not what God wanted to show huh. me. So I thought, well, what, what else do, would he want to show me? So I started looking through the rest of the chapter because the, the rest of the chapter, of course, is all about the resurrection. It's all about the rapture because the rapture and the resurrection are the same thing. All, and, you know, in fact, the word rapture is not in the Bible, That's right, yeah, but sure. the, most people understand what it is. It's the mm -hmm. resurrection of believers. When uh, uh, believers that are dead are raised to life, those who are still alive are caught up in the air. You know, the, you know, people commonly refer to that as the rapture, so I use that term as well. Mm -hmm. But so I started looking through the rest of this chapter, and I came to the middle of the chapter, and st let's start in verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep? For since death came by man, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive." Mm. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Wow. Now that word coming there is the Greek word parousia, yeah, it is. Zach. And, uh, and what the scripture is saying is that the resurrection of believers, the rapture happens at the parousia. Now this Greek word parousia, it's translated there coming and it's most commonly translated that way in your Bible. It's also sometimes translated as presence. Uh, can also be translated as arrival, or in the ancient Greek world, sometimes they translated this wor word as official visit. In other words, 
For example, when the Pope visited the United States last year, that would, in the ancient Greek world, they would have used this term parousia for it because it basically the, the flavor of it is someone very, very important is coming mm-hmm. and they're doing so in an official capacity. And so this scripture right here in 1 Corinthians says that the resurrection of believers is at the parousia. The rapture yes. is at the official visit of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thought, wow, I've never seen that before. That's quite interesting. Yeah. So, because it's basically telling us exactly when the rapture is going to be. So I thought, could there, could there be other scriptures hmm. where this is being used? You know, so I thought uh, immediately I started doing a search and I thought, well, where else does it tell us about the parousia in the, uh, in the scriptures? So uh, the next pl- place that I looked at was 1 Thessalonians 4, because I saw it was the 1 Thessalonians 4. That got my attention because that's about the most famous rapture sure. passage oh, in yeah. the entire Bible. And so let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians 4, starting in verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and arose again, so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming parousia of the Lord will not precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall be forever with the Lord. So once again, just like in 1 Corinthians 15, it tells us the rapture is at the parousia. Mm -hmm. Now here in 1 Thessalonians, it tells us the rapture's at the parousia. So we're seeing a pattern develop. I was seeing a pattern develop. I was like, this is very interesting because this is how God works. There's patterns and there's cycles. And so I thought, So let that stay in your mind. Everywhere you see parousia, you think rapture. Where parousia is at in the New Testament, that is where you and I are out of here. Yeah. And so I thought, this is amazing because, you know, a lot of times in English, sometimes things are a little vague or the translations, you lose something. But often if you look in the original language, it becomes exceedingly clear. And so, you know, we, you know, these passages, so there's a connection with the parousia and the rapture, but there's now other passages, which I discover, which gives us more specific details about the timing of this. Hmm. So let's look in second Thessalonians chapter two, because in this chapter, the word parousia is actually used twice. The first starting in verse one, second Thessalonians chapter two, starting in verse one. Now, brothers concerning the coming parousia, of the, our Lord Jesus Christ and concerning our gathering together unto him. When does that happen? The rapture. Yeah. So once again, we see the connection, the parousia and the rapture discussed once again in conjunction with one another. And, and then he continues. We ask you not to let your mind be quickly shaken or be troubled, neither in spirit nor by word nor by letter coming as though from us as if the day of Christ is already here. Now, verse 3, it was such an important warning for the Apostle Paul's time, also such a key warning for our time. Mm -hmm. In verse 3, do not let anyone deceive you in any way. And unfortunately, in my perspective, we've been deceived today. So let me read that again, verse 3. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless a falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself as God. See, that is one of the many scriptures that had always puzzled me. Is it that Christ would turn that, the parousia, so to speak, where, where Christ returns and we are out of here, that won't happen until the falling away. He just read that. This is scripture until the fallen away, and also until the Antichrist himself is revealed. That would mean that you and I as Christians, as the saints, before Christ comes back and we're out of here, we're actually going to see the Antichrist. You can't deny this stuff. It's written. This is God's word. Yeah, it's right in the word of God. And they're saying there has to be certain things that happen first before the rapture happens. There has to be the falling away. There has to be the revealing of the Antichrist. The Jewish temple has to be rebuilt because the Antichrist is going to go in there and proclaim himself to be God. And it's referring to the abomination of desolation. We're going to look at it in Matthew 24 in just a little bit. But before we get there, let's finish up here in 2 Thessalonians 2 because the word parousia is used again. If we skip down to verse 8, Zach, this is what it says. It says, Then the lawless one will be revealed, the Antichrist, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth 
and destroy with the brightness of his presence. Now that word presence there is also the Greek word parousia. Wow. And so what's saying okay. there is that uh, the Lord is going to come back. There's going to be a final confrontation with the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord is going to uh, win that confrontation. This final confrontation with the Antichrist takes place at the parousia. Now, if you know the book of Revelation, does the final confrontation between Jesus and the Antichrist come before the tribulation? No, of course mm. not. Does it happen in the middle of the tribulation? No, no way. Wow. It, the final confrontation between Jesus and the Antichrist is at the end of the tribulation. And this passage here says it comes at the at the parousia, the parousia, at the parousia. Is, is at the end of, of the tribulation, after the tribulation, immediately after the tribulation. So we've laid all that groundwork because we want to look at Matthew 24 and how all this ties in because it ties in perfectly. That's right. And so you've got to understand that everything he just said is one chapter of his book. Yeah. There's 37 chapters in his book. And Quite frankly, we're not going to have enough time today to go through every chapter. But that one point before we get to uh, Matthew 24, talking about uh, 1 Corinthians 15, when at the last trump, the Lord is going to come back, we'll be changing the twinkling of an eye and, and all of that. Everybody across the board, the pre-tribulation, the mid-tribulation, the post-tribulation people, we all believe that that verse in 1 Corinthians 15 is talking about the rapture. That's whenever Christ comes back. It says that we're raptured, the last trumpet, the dead are raised. Now, what's so crazy, it just, it just seems like it's so, it's almost too simple. So we have 1 Corinthians 15, we're caught up, we're raptured at the last trumpet, the dead are raised, okay? So all you got to do, people, is you go to Revelation chapter 11, you find the final trump, the final trumpet, and then just read beneath those verses, and you're going to see within those verses, that is when the dead are raised. That is whenever the servants are rewarded. But when does that take place? According to 1 Corinthians 15, at the final trumpet, Christ is going to come back and rescue us, so to speak. And, and it gives a clear description of that in Revelation 11. And, and it was always confusing to me, Michael, because I, I, I believe before your book that the rapture took place at Revelation 11 in the final trumpet, uh, and it was somewhere, we're going to be raptured somewhere in the middle of the tribulation. You said that uh, we're going to go through all seven years of the tribulation, but I also believe that we're raptured out at the seventh trumpet. I thought to myself, how in the world can that be? That's right in the middle of all the judgments. For uh, the basic Bible study here, you know you have three categories of judgments in the book of Revelation. The seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bulls. So what you're saying is that from the very first seal to the very last trumpet, not counting the later bulls, but from the very first seal to the very last trumpet, that actually is seven years. And that the, the full extent of God's wrath, so to speak, the bull judgments are after the seven years. And it's just a very quick uh, time period where you can't understand it unless you understand the Jewish feast days, which we talk about here. And that would actually take place those 10 days with the bulls during the actual days of off. But uh, I was always troubled as well whenever I read Matthew 24, where it said that after the tribulation of those days, of what days? And what is Matthew 24? This is Jesus. After the tribulation of those days is whenever I'm going to come and, uh, you know, take my people home. And can you, can you explain that? This is, this is the big chunk. This is the part where you need to pay attention of why this is a post-tribulation rapture. Yeah, let's turn to Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to kind of fit in some of these pieces mm -hmm. we've been talking about, because basically Matthew 24, Jesus is giving us an outline of the last days. And in fact, like, you know, if you look just at the beginning of the chapter of Matthew 24, the disciples of Jesus come to him on the Mount of Olives, and they ask him, and they ask him about the parousia. It, it's absolutely incredible. If you look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, it says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming? That's, again, the Greek word parousia, wow. and of the end of the age. So the disciples want to know, when is the parousia going to be? Wow. Yeah. And so Jesus, then he goes in, he starts describing the signs that are coming, the wars and the rumors of wars. Yeah. He describes the earthquakes, he describes the famines, all the things that are, are going to happen. And then I want to pick up in verse 15. 
where Jesus said, so when you see the abomination of desolation, now this is referring to what we just looked at in 2 Thessalonians 2. Yes. The Antichrist goes into the temple and, and defiles it. And, it. and we know from Daniel chapter 9, this is the midpoint yes. of the seven-year yes. tribulation period. There's only three and a half years left once this takes place. And Jesus says, he says, so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Now is Jesus saying, okay, the midpoint of the tribulation, the Antichrist goes in. You know, is he saying, okay, just hold on a minute because I'm coming to get you because it's in the middle of the tribulation? No. What Jesus is saying at that point, he's saying, those in Judea flee to the mountains. Yes. And then he said, let him who is on the housetop now get, go, not go down to take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not return to take his clothes. Woe to those who are with child and to those who nurse in those days. Pray that your escape will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. So is Jesus talking to believers or unbelievers there? When he says pray, he's talking to believers, yes. instructing them to pray. For then will be great tribulation. The Greek word there is phlepsis. And keep that in mind as we move forward. Such has not happened since the beginning of the world until now, no, no nor shall ever be. So that this uh, abomination of desolation sets off a three and a half year period, war against the saints. I've got a whole chapter about that in my book. This three and a half years, the, the second half of the tribulation. And Jesus is saying uh, that it's gonna, this is going to be an absolutely horrible time. But then skipping down to verse 29, Jesus says this, immediately after the tribulation go. of those days, the, the same Greek word fleep says for tribulation we just saw, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the, the moon shall not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens, wow. and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There's that trumpet there again. Is. And they shall gather his elect from the four winds, wow. from one end of the heavens to the other. But right before Jesus describes the rapture there, which comes, we, we see the trumpet again. In verse 27, right before that, we see the Greek word parousia again, hmm. where it says, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming parousia of the Son of Man. So that, all, that whole section I just described to you about Jesus is saying the rapture comes immediately after the tribulation of those days. Well, Jesus just described, he just used the same yes. Greek word in the original language, parousia, that we saw in all those other scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15. Well, in Matthew 24, Jesus says the parousia is right here at the rapture immediately after the tribulation of those days. But then... Uh, that, that's not all. That actually, the, the, the word parousia used, is used a couple more times uh, in this passage. And so let's skip down and let's start, start reading in verse 36, because Jesus isn't done with this section in verse 36. Concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. As were the days of Noah, so will the parousia, parousia. of the son of man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood uh, came and took them all away. So will the coming parousia of the son of man. Uh, two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. And so we see here kind of we've all seen the rapture movies where two people are there. One's mm -hmm. taken, the other is left. The rapture. And so right here, Jesus once again connects the parousia, that word is used two times right there, with the rapture, where, where one person's taken, one person's left. So we see the Lord Jesus Christ himself connects the parousia and the rapture. Here in Matthew wow. 24, he says, it's immediately after the tribulation of those days. That, mm -hmm. And that's why I entitled my book, The Rapture Verdict, because there's no debate. The there scriptures no, are yeah. very clear. That, and, and Jesus told us himself, the rapture comes immediately after the tribulation. All the pieces put together. And like you said, Zach, we are only able to cover a few pieces today, uh, only a few nuggets from the book, but I've got 37 chapters in the book, the most comprehensive look at this that I've seen anywhere. But uh, I put it all together 
in this book and, and people can get it from, yeah. from the Jim Baker That's ministry? Right. Yes, you can go to www.jimbakershow.com and order this new book, The Rapture Verdict. Like you said, we, we covered about two and a half chapters of these 37 chapters. And it's been, it's been shaking me. I mean, it really has. This book has been shaking me. It's been shaking what I believe the, these last few years. And um, I believe that we can learn something from, we can't be so dogmatic. We have to be open to, to new ideas. And, and I think we can really learn something from types and, and parallels throughout the scripture. Mm -hmm. I think we can learn something from, from Noah's life. And we can learn something from, from Joseph's life. You see, I also, before I get there, in the book of Daniel, it talks about how knowledge will be increased. I don't think that's just talking about Technology. I believe it's the knowledge of the Word of God. I believe that, that new things about the, the, the knowledge of the Lord is going to be unlocked in the end times. And I believe this is one of those things that is, is more new to many of your ears. And, and he sets a case like I've never heard before. But if you think about Noah, and if you think about Joseph, the Lord told them what was coming beforehand, and they prepared to go through the storm. The, God did not rapture Noah out of the storm, okay? And God did not rapture Joseph out of the storm. They prepared, and by them preparing, their preparations made it so that they were being able to sustain themselves through the storm. I want to encourage you today to go and order The Rapture Verdict by Michael Snyder. We have about two minutes left, Michael. Is there any closing thoughts that you want to give to the people today? Yeah, there's one more thought I wanted to share because, you know, in past days, people said, well, I believe this, you believe that, and it'll all work, just, uh, work out in the end. But my, my contention is that what we believe about the last days really matters. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why. One reason I want to share is because uh, the, the billions of souls are at stake. And as the world is shaken, as things go crazy in this world, people are going to be looking for answers. And if people come in the evangelical world is, is screaming, Jesus is coming any minute, Jesus is coming any minute, and they keep screaming that, and then Jesus doesn't show up. Yeah. Well, you know, all the people that are searching for answers are going to say, well, we don't know what's going on, but we know for sure you evangelical Christians don't have the answer wow. because you said Jesus was coming to pull you guys out of here. That didn't happen. And this was prophesied in Second Peter. Let me just read the scripture real first. In 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 3, know this first, that there shall come scoffers in the last days, that's for our day, who walk after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? And that's wow. what these scoffers are going to be saying. They're going to be saying, where is this Jesus? Where is this uh, rapture that was promised? And, and it, it, it's not going to be there. And so they're going to turn away because they're going to think we don't have any answers. But if we can get this message out there and show them Jesus doesn't come back till the very end, they're not going to mock us because we're saying, hey, Jesus doesn't come back till this is all over. Mm. So this is so important because our witness is at stake. People are going to be looking for answers yeah. and we need to be there to tell them the truth. If we tell them something that doesn't happen, that, that the pre-tribulation rapture doesn't show up, we're going to compromise our witness. The, the, the millions of souls are at stake and we want to bring in the end time harvest. So we need to, we need to get this truth out there. So yes. we're telling, telling people accurately what the word of God actually says. So people will come to us and say, hey, you do know what's going on. Amen. You do have answers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michael Snyder, for being with uh, me on the program yes, today. I hope you. you can come back to Revelation in the News. And uh, remember, get that book, The Rapture Verdict, www.jimbakershow.com. We'll see you next time.